before we go further in the subject of classical mechanics i would like to review certain mathematical quantities uh, which we are going to encounter frequently in this in this course and it will help us keep our later discussions uncluttered okay so we record everything here of all those things which we will require and later we will um, just make a reference to what we have discussed today okay so that's the plan mostly i'll be dealing with square matrices so if i do not say specifically that i am talking about a square matrix you assume that i am talking about square matrix so um i will be only talk talking about square matrices in this and in general they will have a dimension n cross n so n number of rows and number of columns that's what a square matrix is and as you know that to a matrix you can define a transpose so if you have a matrix m a square matrix you can define a transpose m transpose which you obtain by interchanging the rows and columns okay let's see how you write this down in index notation so if i want to uh, tell the indices of um i mean tell the element of a matrix so i i specify ith row element at the ith row and the jth column so that you say mij so this is the entry mij okay so how this mij is related to the elements of m transpose it's like this so let's say you ask m transpose you take that matrix and ask what is the element in ith row and jth column okay and as i said it's just the interchange of row and columns of m so it should be mj i okay so this is how you you should write this expression okay you always have identity matrix at your disposal okay so identity and whatever problem you are doing uh, if it involves matrices identity is there and identity is all the elements on the diagonal are one if you are off the diagonal it's zero which means the components if i want to write down in components then you can represent your identity matrix by chronicle delta ij okay that's good if you have a symmetric matrix okay then it implies that m transpose is same as i m okay which means that so uh, let me do it slightly slowly i know many students get it wrong when they try they should not but they do um let's say let's do this one let's say m transpose equal to m and i want to write down this expression in uh component form so i want to use indices i and j to write this so what you have to do is on both the sides so this is a matrix equation and let's say i want to know uh i j th element so i should take the i j th element on the left hand side i should take the i j th element on the right hand side which is what this equation is saying and this implies and you have already seen what m transpose ij is it is here mji so you get mji equals mij that's the condition for a matrix to be symmetric okay let's look at an anti symmetric matrix if you look at an anti symmetric matrix so when you transpose you get a minus sign okay so you should have mji equals minus mij that's good now uh that's easy let's go to the next and you can say this is a theorem of course a simple theorem given any square matrix 
M, you can always decompose that matrix into a symmetric and anti-symmetric part. Okay, and in fact, you can um, you can do more. You can take the symmetric part and further decompose into two parts, one which will be traceless, another which will carry the trace. Okay, so I'll show you uh, a square matrix. can be decomposed into a symmetric matrix I want to as I said I can um, decompose the symmetric part further so into a symmetric traceless matrix a uh, matrix that will be proportional to identity which you will see immediately why and then an, an anti-symmetric piece anti-symmetric Okay, the proof is uh, almost trivial. So let's say you have M, which is N cross N, N cross N matrix. So I can write down M as M plus M transpose by 2 plus M minus M transpose over 2. Okay, so let's check whether it's fine. It's fine. So M transpose gets cancelled by M transpose here and you have M by 2, M over 2 and they make M. So this is fine. Okay, this is your symmetric part and this is your anti-symmetric part. Why is it symmetric? Because if you take a transpose of this entire piece, you'll get M transpose plus M, which is same as what you already have here. And if you take the transpose of this piece, you'll get M transpose minus M, which is the negative of what you have here. And that's why it is anti-symmetric. Okay, so in the component form, I can write this as Mij equals Mij plus Mji half. Okay, that's the first symmetric piece and then you have mij minus mji over half o over 2 okay that's your anti symmetric piece and as i said a uh, couple of minutes ago you always have identity matrix at your disposal okay now identity matrix is a symmetric matrix so out of this symmetric piece okay here I can take out or I can subtract any any uh, matrix which is proportional to identity okay and and uh, filter that out and what will be useful uh, is to uh, take out a matrix which is proportional to identity of course and the proportionality factor is the trace of M okay so that's what we want to do so let's have a look at it um so let's say i here let look at this um identity which is a symmetric piece i multiplied with trace trace of m okay now this is what i want to add and subtract in the above expression but i have to be careful because let, let's say i multiply with some factor k and I will fix the factor k that will be easier way of stating all this so what I'm saying is I will write m um, so I add here k times trace of m trace of m is some number it's not a matrix times identity because I've added this I want to also subtract it so that I don't change the equation 
times identity okay that's good now let's see uh, what the case to I mean, from here the, whatever k you take it's all fine but what i want to do is i want to club that term with this okay and i what what i want to do is that this entire this plus this should be traceless that's what i want to do and that will fix the k for me okay otherwise you cannot fix k this is identically true so let's see so what i want to do is i want to take half m i j plus m j i the f the term here and the term here plus k trace of m into identity okay i want this piece to be traceless that's what i require make this traceless okay so let's see let's take the trace of it so i take the trace of it what do i get i get half from here trace of the matrix and it's um maybe i uh, and that join uh, not not the transpose is the same okay but i hope you already know that uh, the trace is written as m i i meaning i am summing over the repeated index here so what is trace trace is the sum of diagonal entries and if you are summing over all these that's what you get the sum over all the diagonal entries so m11 plus m22 and so forth so here when i'm taking trace all i have to do is identify i and j and use the einstein summation convention so it becomes half mii which is the trace again mii which is the trace of m plus k is a constant trace m is a constant so there is nothing happening there and then you have identity matrix which has 1 1 1 and number of times on the diagonal so if you take a trace you are adding up all those ones which gives you n right because i am saying n cross n matrix and this we want to be zero this trace we want to be zero now this is trace of m two trace of m these two together and there's a half so which gives you trace of m there's a trace of m here so from this equation i can remove the trace of m and what will be left with is uh 1 plus k times n equals 0 okay right and which means that your k is Minus one over n. Good. So here, in this place, I should replace minus one over n. And here again, which will make it plus one over n because of the minus already which is present. So um, yeah. So that's. Let me write down again. The result is your. m i j can be written as m i j plus m j i half okay that's what you already have then minus 1 over n that's what you found and then you had the trace term trace of m and that then you have the identity and identity is delta i j okay i'm writing in in components Okay, that that identity I should have written delta i j here, uh, but it's okay. So you see a minus one by it was n minus one by n trace m times identity. This this identity please write down as delta i j. Okay, here also. Okay, so that is the your traceless part plus one by n. trace of m delta ij that is your trace part so you have filtered out the trace and then you have the anti symmetry piece half m ij minus mji okay so that's the decomposition decomposition which you can always make
okay that's good and i believe you already knew it okay mm. now we want to talk about so i want to talk about the total the number of independent entries that you have in a symmetric matrix or an anti symmetric matrix okay that's what we want to do and i'll uh count these in two different ways so first let's look at a symmetric matrix okay so for symmetric matrix if you have n cross n matrix the total number of entries that you have in the entire matrix is n cross n okay so total is n square so to begin with we have n square elements but of course not all of them are independent so let's draw here um a symmetric matrix let me write down so so you have something here let's say a 3 cross 3 just for the sake of explanation okay you have all some entries at all these places okay now if this is symmetric which means apart from the entries on the diagonal whatever you have above the same thing you have below okay so this guy is same as that guy this guy is same as that guy and so forth so if i can count how many entries are here i'll be done so how do i get this so in total you have n square if you count everything here you have n square so out of n square you remove what you have on the diagonal on the diagonal you have n entries right first second third and so forth so n square men n is what you have other than the diagonal entries now you divide by 2 you get what you have in the upper triangle upper half so you divide by 2 which is same as n into n minus 1 over 2 so these are the total entries in the upper half upper triangle okay in the upper triangle that's good so how many we have in total independent ones of course the ones which you have calculated just now these ones and i don't bother about these because they are same and then of course the n on the diagonal so i should take this n which are coming from the diagonal ones and then these coming from here and how much is that that is n you take an outside 2 plus n minus 1 over 2 this is n 2 minus 1 is 1 which makes it n plus 1 over 2 so these are the total number of entries which are independent for a symmetric matrix which is correct let's check let's say um you have a 3 cross 3 matrix so if you had a 3 cross 3 matrix you should get 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 let's see if n is 3 this is 4 3 plus 1 4 4 over 2 is 2 and 3 times 2 is 6 which is correct okay now i want to count it in a slightly different way and I'll arrive at the same answer okay so that was first way of looking at it uh second way not really different actually so here um i say that i have n square elements or parameters which parameterize a symmetric matrix 
and then I say how many conditions are there, how many constraints are there on these parameters and I will remove out of the total number those constraints and I will get the number of independent parameters that parameterize a symmetric matrix. Okay, So that is your total number of parameters, not necessarily independent, total number of parameters. Okay, And how many constraints do you have? Let us look at constraints. So the constraint is that m i j is same as m j i that is what a symmetric matrix is. Now if i equal to j it says m i i equals m i i. So this is not a constraint it says whatever you have is uh, whatever you have on the so it says m 1 1 is m 1 1 m 2 2 is m 2 2 2 m 2 2 that is saying nothing that is not putting any constraints. So these do not give any constraints and only when i is not equal to j you are going to get constraints. Okay, So when i is not equal to j it says m i j equals m j i it says for example m 1 2 is m 2 1 so that is a constraint and how many of uh, such constraints you have. Now you can see that i can take any of the n values, then j can take any of the remaining n minus 1 values. Okay, I do not take again n because one of them is here right? when they become equal. So n can take any of the n minus 1 values which is good. So it, uh, these are uh, the number of constraints but we are still over counting because m 1 2 here let us say it is 1 and 2 and m 2 1 these are same relations right. So it says m 1 2 is m 2 1 and again you get m 2 1 is m 1 2. So you are counting twice so you divide by 2. So these are the total number of independent constraints uh, yes total number of independent constraints. So here you have the total number of constraints is n into n minus 1 over 2. Okay, So how do you get the total number of parameters? independent parameters you get by taking the total number of parameters that you have minus the total number of number of constraint equations that you have which is n into n minus 1 over 2. Let us see what that is this is n I have taken out common and you have n minus n plus n minus n plus sorry that, that's um, what am I doing sorry okay so I have taken n outside so you have an n this n is gone so I only minus you have n minus 1 by 2 what am I doing yeah, sorry, n minus 1 by 2, that is correct. So you have n, 2n minus n gives you n, this makes a plus 1, and you have a half here, which is, let us see what you got earlier, n into n plus 1 by 2, which is same as before, right? So uh, that is how you count for a symmetric matrix that it has uh, these many independent um, parameters. And for a uh, anti-symmetric matrix, it is the same calculation except for the fact that on the diagonal you have nothing. Okay, the diagonal entries are zero, so you remove uh, those n n, n n entries. So let's see. So for an anti-symmetric matrix, what we can do is we can take the previous result, which was n into n plus one over two. Okay, n into n plus 1 over 2 but now I have nothing on the diagonal they are all 0 so there is nothing to choose they are not in a, you cannot make a choice of what should be on the first entry what should be the second entry on the diagonal so you remove them okay because that is he in here. So what do you get you take n outside you have n plus 1 over 2 minus 1 which is 
n over 2 n plus 1 minus 2 which is n minus 1 okay so n into n minus 1 over 2 which is the correct result and let's check for a 3 cross 3 matrix you should get only 3 what you have on the upper upper corner okay so you put 3 n equal to 3 so you get 3 by 2 into 3 minus 1 is 2 3 so it's correct okay that's fine now I want to define what is a positive definite matrix maybe I should go to the next page okay um, so I'll write down a Hermitian matrix you know Hermitian matrix is if you take the um, dagger of it you, you get it back so H dagger is H and daggering involves doing a complex conjugation and the transpose both so here is a definition um, shall I use a color no. let's see mm, color okay so positive definite matrix and I will also look at positive semi definite matrix so anyway let me define positive definite matrix first go back to black So the definition is here. A Hermitian matrix H is positive definite okay if for any non-zero complex column vector that you take okay and if you sandwich on the left hand side on the right hand side of H these um, these column vectors you should get a positive quantity so let me be more precise here if for any non-zero complex column vector Z vector Z H star so H star is the complex conjugate of Z sorry not H Z star is the complex conjugate of Z H Z if you calculate this okay so here is a matrix H you on the right hand side you put a, um, a column matrix on the left hand side you have put a row matrix after taking the conjugate and I'm saying that no matter what Z you take okay for all z if this quantity turns out to be positive then i will say that h is a positive definite matrix so let me read a hermitian matrix h is positive definite if for any non zero complex column vector z h star h z is positive okay that's that's the definition of it um another definition I will use some color here okay and the definition is a Hermitian matrix H is positive semi definite so I put semi here if for any non zero complex column vector Z H star H is positive or zero okay so the the thing which I've written in green applies for only uh, semi definite so if you always get positive not zero then it's positive definite if you can also get zero then it is called positive semi definite so that's the definition of it we'll talk a little bit about uh, this in a while 
but before that i will say something about a symmetric matrix so you know a symmetric matrices are the brothers of or cousins of a hermitian matrices so what is a, a hermitian matrix in the complex world is is a real matrix in a in a in a real world okay world of real real vectors so um symmetric matrix is positive definite if it gives you a positive result for whatever z you take okay so you put a z let's say the symmetric matrix is what i am calling s okay and you you multiply by um any column which is a real column on the right hand side and uh with the same column written as a row on the left hand side and if you get a positive uh, value for it then it's a positive definite matrix so let me write it down here um uh real symmetric matrix is positive definite was definite if for any non zero real column okay let's call that column as a you get a transpose s a as positive okay if this is true then uh, your matrix s is positive definite if as before you get um zero also so let's say you uh, can get zero for certain vectors then you call it as positive semi definite or zero let me put it in brackets okay so these are the definitions mm now first um, let me give you a simple example i think that will be a nice thing to do yeah first let me give you a trivial example so i am now uh, looking at some the trivialest uh, ident um, symmetric matrix is the identity matrix and this is positive definite okay because if you take any any non zero vector let's say um x1 x2 and so forth xn and you have identity matrix here and you have this column x1 to xn what you get is x1 square plus x2 square so and so forth xn square now no matter what x you take okay if x is x1 is minus 5 x2 is minus 20 some of them are zero and some of them are positive no matter what because the squares are involved here whatever you get is always positive okay the only way you can get a zero here is only if you take the vector itself to be zero if all these x's are zero then you get but then we are saying uh, the definition involves only non zero vectors so this is clearly a positive definite matrix let me give you a non trivial example uh please pay attention to uh, the positive definite matrices because we are going to utilize this later when we talk the talk about um, uh, small oscillations okay so let's see here so i take the matrix to be 1 Minus one, minus one, and one. 
okay let's see now what we get so um, what you do is let's send which x y or you could have written x1 x2 doesn't matter 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and x y okay so I'm taking any any x any y and what do you get here you get here is x minus y square so can you tell me what kind of matrix this is is it a positive definite matrix is it positive semi definite matrix or none of those see not every matrix will be a positive definite or positive semi definite they may be ni neither of these so what do you think is the case here so clearly no matter what x and y you choose you are going to get uh, you are going to never get something which is negative right because of the square here but you can get a zero because if x and y are same you get a zero so if you choose 1 1 for the vector you get a zero you get you choose 2.5 2.5 you get a zero okay but if you choose x and y to be different you get non-zero so this is clearly an example of a positive semi-definite matrix okay that's good um, now you may ask what happens if I take a real symmetric matrix which is uh, let's say positive definite or positive semi-definite and a sandwich between two uh, I mean I, I put from the left a z star and from the right a z and where z is a complex vector what happens to that okay do I get something complex do I get something real okay do I can I say something about it being positive definite or not in the complex space and that's what I want to show you now and the algebra is again quite simple so um, let's say I r take a complex vector z column vector or yeah column vector and let's say I'm given a, a positive definite matrix forget positive definite let's say a symmetric matrix s okay we'll not specify any property of s so I just take s which is just symmetric I'm not assuming any other property right now and let's look at the quantity z star s z and ask what this is okay so first thing I do is I take the z and write it in terms of real quantity so let's say the column z can be written as this where alpha and beta are real okay and of course alpha is a column and beta is also a column real column real column vector and this is also a real column vector so z star would be your alpha minus i beta and let's now construct z star as z so you have an alpha alpha plus i beta okay times your s times your alpha sorry there was a minus sign here I put a minus sign here alpha plus i beta okay now if you want to yeah I want to write this out, uh, this out in components okay so I say um, what am I using k so let's let me put a index k here m here and m I'm also using Einstein summation convention okay so there's a sum over k and m and this is how you write a product okay okay that's good so I have um, 
four terms here. So I multiply alpha s alpha. So I get alpha k s k m and alpha m. Let me multiply the betas. You get i square is minus one and there's minus already there. So that makes a plus. So you have a beta k s k m beta m. That's good. Then you have the cross terms involving alphas and betas. So let's look at them. You get alpha k s k m beta m and there's a i sign. Uh, I mean i here. And this one will give you minus i beta k s k m and from here you get an alpha m. Okay. Let's look at these two terms. You see these k and m are repeated, they are dummy, so I can interchange. So instead of k, I can start writing m and instead of m, I start writing k. So I look at this term. This one I will write it as, I keep the minus i also with me, minus i, beta m, s, m, k, alpha k. Okay, so I've just interchanged the dummy indices, so which I'm allowed to. Now your S is a symmetric matrix, so S M K is same as S K M as you saw earlier. So I can write this as minus I beta M S K M alpha K, which is nothing but minus I. Let me write down first alpha K S K M beta M. This term is same as this term except for the minus sign. Okay, so these two cancel. So this cancels against this. And what I'm left with is only these two. And at where alpha and beta are um, real vectors. So now you see, and first thing you realize is that even though your Z is complex, you can always uh, split this into terms involving only the real real parts and there is no complex left around okay and also if s is positive definite uh, then this will be positive and this will be also positive both both these will be positive which means this will also be positive even in the complex space okay so that's one thing which i wanted to uh, tell about which we will utilize later when we talk about oscillations okay and I want to talk about two very simple theorems which will again be very useful let's talk about them so I call them two simple theorems because they are simple what happened two simple theorems okay theorem number one maybe some some color will be nice okay okay let me see what I've written Okay, so let me write down. So um, the, the thing which I want to tell you here is the following. Let's say you are given some matrix, let's call it phi, okay? And I want to multiply some constant uh, in each column of the matrix. So, so, so you look at the matrix phi as a collection of columns. So column number one, column number two, column number three, and so forth. And each column, I want to multiply some number. So in the first column, let's say I want to multiply two. In the second column, I want to multiply three. In third column, I want to multiply 25. Okay, like this. So what should I do to um, get this? And similarly, given a matrix phi, I want to multiply certain numbers in each in each row okay so first row I want to multiply something second row something and so forth so that is what I um, am looking at 
let me write it down multiply multiplying each column of a square and cross n matrix okay phi by a constant and because these constants could be different i let me write down this dear by constants okay can be achieved by multiplying your phi from right hand side on right hand side not from on right hand on its right on its right side on its right side on its right side by a diagonal matrix matrix lambda and what is that lambda lambda contains all the numbers which you want to multiply so lambda is diagonal uh, matrix with entries lambda 1 lambda 2 and so forth lambda n okay these are the lambda 1 lambda 2 these are the things which you want to multiply in each column and what's the result can so here i'm writing multiplying each column of a square and cross and matrix phi by constants can be achieved by multiplying phi on its right side by a diagonal matrix lambda where lambda is this and how do you achieve it by multiplying on the right hand side which is your phi if you do this okay if you do this then you will achieve what you have desired let me give a quick proof it's trivial so what i want to do is i want to start from uh, let me use um small phi to denote the entry so let's say i have phi i k okay k k is the one which uh, labels the columns okay so what i want to do is go from here to phi i k but each entry um i mean each column gets multiplied by some k so lambda k right k remember k labels the column so that's why i'm multiplying by lambda k that's good that's what i want to achieve and what is this this right hand side i can write as so there is no summation over k here okay no summation over k even though the k is uh, repeated that that should be clear now i can write this phi i k as phi i l delta k l or let me write l k it's symmetric anyway so i can write delta l k and you already have a lambda k sitting with you okay that lambda k is there so phi i l delta l k makes phi i k there is a summation over l which is there but not over k let me make it explicit by putting summation over l okay so you agree with this now this i define as some matrix capital lambda and l k remember there's no summation over k so that's why i'm able to put this uh, two indices see this is this has two free indices l and k and that's why i can create this matrix capital lambda with two free indices l and k okay so that is correct and what is phi i l times lambda l k this is just the rule for matrix multiplication right so i am summing over l so this i write as phi times lambda and we are here looking at i k th element okay so that's good if you want to multiply 
uh, each column that is what you should do so put uh, create a matrix lambda which is diagonal and put all the numbers which you want to multiply on the diagonal entries and if you construct this quantity that's what is going to give you what you desire okay theorem number two should be obvious now multiplying each row of a square matrix phi n cross n by again I put different in brackets constants can be achieved by multiplying phi from the left by multiplying phi on left with again the same diagonal matrix which we had earlier matrix lambda which is diagonal of whose diagonal entries are the constants which you want to multiply okay okay that's what it is so phi should go to lambda phi that's what it is let me prove it again it's simple trivial as before so you have here this thing um, so take the phi i k element now i labels the row so because you want to multiply in each row something so on i th row you want to multiply lambda so this is what you want to achieve right this is where you want to arrive at and this you can write as before as phi again there is no summation over i that you remember even though they are repeated so let me write phi l k delta i l okay if i write this i have made this into phi i k okay so that is how i have lifted off i from the phi and put on the delta this you can always do okay so given a uh, one index you can always pull out from some quantity and put on another uh, using a delta function that's fine but our uh, lambda i i is still there there is no summation over i but there is a summation over l let me make it explicit by putting this that's good now again as before i define this as matrix lambda and i is a free index and l is also free at least in here in this part okay and you see now what you have is summation over l lambda i l phi l k which is nothing but the um, matrix multiplication rule lambda times phi and you are looking at the i kth element of it okay so we see that we, we have achieved it okay um, I'll stop here and we will talk more about matrices and other related quantities uh, which we are going to utilize in um, in the later parts of the course okay